Okay, in this video I'm going to directly address some questions that Lethan asked me about whether these machines right here, the Dell Precision T7400, will run modern games. Because I've got a T5400 video up showing me putting a GTX 1060 NVIDIA card in it, and he wanted to know whether it would run it. So, yes, this will run it. The big difference between the, the C7400 and T5400 was the fact that this was the big brother. It has, it'll hold two more slots worth of CD-ROMs. It'll hold a couple more hard drives in it. And it has a 1,000 watt power supply, and it has a SAS 6 native controller on the motherboard. Whereas the T5400 has a SAS 5. I had a SAS 6 card in my PCI X8 slot, so I tend to say mine is SAS 6, but it's technically not. It's a, it was a card that was ordered that way when the computer was bought new. But, these right here were also hauled with riser boards in them, 128 gigs of memory. And the, the big difference, though, is the fact that they'll both run 667 memory, and they'll both run the 1333 bus speed processors. But the T5400 will not run the 800 bus speed memory and the 1600 bus speed processors. Although I have heard that people were putting them in there. Officially, they don't run them. Now, the thing is that this one can do that, but the memory will cost you a lot more. And the, the 1333 with the 667 memory, which I hear that people put 667 memory with the 1600 processors as well. But the, the 667 memory is what you find in most machines, even these. It's, it's cheaper memory to buy. And it's, it's just a really good memory. But if you've got the uh, 1800 in there, then just leave it in there. But I would suggest throwing another 4 gigs in it. Now, as for whether to run modern games, yes it will. And here's why. Here's a, here's a basic explanation of why these machines are still relevant. Look at this where you've got a pickup truck that'll go 100 miles per hour. Okay? And you've got a little economy car that'll go 100 miles per hour. Well, you throw a trailer on them, both of them vehicles, same amount on the trailer, that pickup truck can still go 100 miles per hour. But that car, you'd be doing good to get 30 out of it because it doesn't have the extra torque to handle it. Now that's the way these machines were, were made. Now that car might go 120 miles per hour as opposed to the pickup truck going 100. But you throw that same weight on it and you're still going to get 30, 40, 50 miles per hour out of it. But that pickup truck is still going to go 100. And you follow that scenario on out. And that's what you end up with with a modern processor. According to the specs on paper, the newest, most powerful processor the i7 is almost three times as fast as this one here with a three gigahertz processor. But you're not going to need that, first of all. Second of all, what I was talking about, these are Xeon processors. The i7 is basically built off of the top of uh, the regular Pentiums. Now, they may have cache that runs at the speed now. They may have adapted that. I don't know. I hadn't checked. I'll be honest with you. But in the olden days, the speed of them ran at half the processor speed, whereas Xeons ran at the speed of the processor. And the, and the cache is like the torque of a processor. It, it's, it's memory right there on the processor where it can access it real fast. So if it runs at the speed, it's, it's that much better. And then they had 3 megs per core instead of having 1 or 2 megs. So you had all that extra torque there. It's like putting bigger valves in a, in a head of an engine, you know. So you're getting more there. So they make up the slacks what I'm getting at with that. Now, does it cover all bases? No, but it does what it needs to do is my point. Okay, the memory. The memory is the, the biggest bottleneck. Now, anybody who says the hard drives, yes, we all know the hard drive is technically the 
and always will be the biggest bottleneck. But once you get the stuff loaded in the hole, that kind of becomes irrelevant at that point. So that's out of the picture. That leaves, as far as physically playing a game on the spot, you're going to be using your video card, your processor, and your your memory. Okay? Now, memories have different lanes. Like these are DDR2, you know, so basically two lanes. And then, you know, they got DDR3, DDR5, all that kind of stuff. Well, they're slow because they use the DDR2 and they use air correcting RAM. Now, the air correcting makes it more stable, but it slows it down a little bit because it has to monitor itself. And the fact that it's old 667 memory slows it down. But you can get so much in there that it takes up the slack. You know, you throw, like I say, you got 8 gigs, I suggest putting at least 12. But I, I, if it was me, I'd put 16 in and leave it at that. You can put more, but if you got 16, you're good to go. Okay. Because the extra memory can take up the slack. And with a brand new video card, it's going to be really pulling its weight, so you'll be fine running 50, 60 frames per second. No, you're not going to get these 200 frames, but when you're actually playing the game, you're not really going to notice it. You'll notice it on a program that tells you it, but you won't really notice it. Now, they got PCI Express 3.0 out and all this kind of stuff, and these are 2.0, 16X. Well, they haven't maxed out the 2.0 yet. But you throw that video card in there, you're going to lose 5 to 10% of its capability at max because it's in a 2.0 slot. Probably really wouldn't lose that much. You'd probably lose about 3% just because it's in a 2.0 slot instead of a 3.0 slot. Even though it's not maxed out the bandwidth of the slot, there's other factors to consider. So you're going to lose some. And then you're going to lose 10 or 15% overall because of the machine being older and the slower memory and all that kind of stuff. So, just to, to cover bases, you've got about a 20% deficit that you're going to have to deal with. Now, like I say, this is just rough math. I haven't actually run no figures on it, but I'm just saying 20%. And you say, oh, 20%. Yes, but how far ahead are you with the video card now? And like I say, you're dealing with torque and all anyway, and you got the extra cores anyway, and all this kind of stuff. In other words, if you just had a 3 gigahertz with dual core in there, and your basic 8 gigs of RAM, then you wouldn't have so much extra buffer. But with, with at least one, one quad core, and you can put two in there, as you know, but one quad core, yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. But with that said, I figure these are good for one more cycle. That's two or three years of use. And then they're going to get behind. But the way I look at it, a lot of the newer machines are going to start getting behind because I think they're about to come up with a leap. So they've been going through a big, jump. You know, if you'll notice the, the video cards have had a big jump. They're going to be coming out with, you know, processors that are just massively more more powerful than what they've got now. And the same thing with memory. You know, I, I've been reading that, uh, Microsoft and I think it was crucial to come out with memory that's a hundred times faster than what we've got now. And the same thing with the processor. So now they're not going to come out with a computer in the next couple of years. It's going to be a hundred times faster, but I do believe they're going to be a jump in them. So even if you're buying a brand new computer today, it's, it's going to be very dated. So you can get one of these, you know, as you know, for a couple hundred dollars, you can upgrade it for about a hundred dollars. You can upgrade the, the memory for like fifty dollars and get 32 gigs in it, and you're good. Um, you can put dual quad core 3.16s you can get for about sixty dollars. And you're good. Now, I, on my other video, I said $70 for each, but you can actually get both of them. The memory I just got for my T50 pointer 32, brand new memory. It said used, but it came and it was brand new memory. 32 gigs, I got it for $39. Now, you probably won't find that deal. You know, it'll probably, like I say, cost you $50, $60, but regardless, you spend $50 on it and, and get you done dual quad core processors to 3.16s and and, and you're good, but you don't need the processor. I'm just making a point that for $100, $120, you could 32 gigs of memory and dual quad core 3.16 gig processors, and you've got it covered. Then you throw a two or $300 video card in there, good to go. Good to go. So, you know, you've got $600 in a machine that's good to go, and, and it'll, it'll just chug right along. 
So don't let these people get you down talking about system being dated and everything. Because they're always going to say that. you got people that, that want the latest grace all the time. <clears throat> That's how NVIDIA sells these Titan, Titan uh, video cards. Because they, they prey on people that's going to say, oh, well, I've got the Titan. Yeah, you also paid $1,200 for it, and it's going to be irrelevant in a year because you've got to have the latest and greatest. If you would just settle for something that done the job, then you could get, there again, one of these $250 video cards, and you really wouldn't notice any difference. Yes, you will notice a slight bit of difference, but it's so minute, it don't even matter. And you've paid $300, Whereas they're paying $1,200, and in a year they're not going to be happy. So, who, who's doing the wiser choice here? Anyway, enjoy your machine, and don't worry about it. You're good to go. You know, and these machines, they'll hold two terabyte hard drives, and it'll hold four or five of the things, so you're good to go there. And you can always get a good workout picking it up. Thank you.